how to think about prioritizing AI implementations. I've talked about business and digital transformations often. To thrive, businesses have to meet the needs of their current customers and future customers effectively. To do this, they often have to re-architect and transform themselves. Think of how you re-architected and transformed your own life over time. 30 years back, you were not reachable by phone at all times. Now, you don't go anywhere without your cell phone. 20 years back, you could not track how many steps you walked each day. Now, you focus more on exercise. 10 years back, working remotely was a rare concept. Today, you can work from anywhere for many jobs. All this has changed your life and you've adjusted accordingly. Companies too have to evolve and adapt over time. If they don't, they'll die like the blockbusters and borders of the world. But the fundamental principles of business have not changed though. You make a product or offer a service where the money you put in is less than what you would be able to sell it for or the time you put in translates into profitability. Before we get into the details, hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon to be notified of new videos on AI, architecture, and you that I publish every other week. There are three major disruptions for business in most recent times. One is the cost of operations has been dramatically lowered through automation by software. That's business process automation. Two, the reach of the business has extended dramatically by the internet that has increased connectivity and broke the concept of local markets. Three, the current disruption is driven by AI, which introduces intelligence into the business and in many cases can replace some tasks done by human. The transformation journey that uses AI is inevitable. There are two things we need to figure out for the last one. How should businesses best use AI? And two is, how do people adjust to the new role? In this video, I'll just focus on the first part, that is, how should businesses use AI? Here's what a typical legacy company looks like. There are a lot of processes that make things happen, but over time, these processes were changed to adapt and without necessarily redesigning them from scratch. That's okay, because every time you had a small change, you don't want to redesign the whole process. But over time, these processes got complicated. These processes were supported by software running on an in-house infrastructure. However, these tools also were first purchased by individual departments that had their own budgets and needs. The concept of data integration was usually an afterthought. People were and are still an integral part of the company. One of the primary roles was to fill in the gaps that software could not fill. They had special domain knowledge, organizational and management skills, creativity, leadership skills, and so on, those that were very difficult for software to create. The modern business, though, might be a lot different, especially if you were to start one today. It would have streamlined business processes, work on a digital framework and no paper, have the systems that connect across each other to share and exchange data, and in many cases also interact with external systems. The budgeting is done at an enterprise level that helps to break the silos. For many companies, the systems might not even be on-premise, just rented off the cloud from providers like Google Cloud Platform or DigitalOcean and many more. Since software is becoming more intelligent, it's able to fill a lot more gaps and there is less traditional human-related work to be done. So people have to retrain themselves to acquire new skills, skills that are much more difficult or too expensive for AI systems to do. Let's look at this from another perspective. AI can potentially be introduced in many parts of the organization. 
In the ideal case, a whole business is digitized, transformed, and made intelligent with AI. But practically speaking, that's both infeasible and not required. Let's look at why. Any organization exists in the context of an ecosystem. When we think about transforming the business, we're essentially partitioning the business into three parts. The first is a customer facing, the second is the customer supporting, and the third is the backend operations. Think about a bank. When you introduce AI in the customer facing box, then you could include systems and processes that directly interact with the customer. For example, a chatbot that interacts with the customer, a robo-advisor that gives customer advice on investments, or predictive analytics that helps the customer understand their spending patterns and shares alerts when a big payment is due. The customer support box is where the bank will use systems and processes to evaluate the customer for different products or services. Here, AI technologies could include bank's evaluation of whether the customer will be able to repay the auto loan he or she is taking, credit risk scoring for the customer, guidance to managers on how to manage the customer's wealth, and alerts for maintenance to ensure that the ATMs the customer use are always operational. The backend operations box is where the bank will use systems and processes to manage its operations. Here, AI technologies could include intelligent document processing, overall risk management of portfolios, physical security, meeting compliance requirements, business process management, and fraud detection. No matter where AI is installed, it needs to be supported by a foundation that includes the bare metal infrastructure, data, AI tools, applications, processes that can all lead to better insights for the business. Large companies may choose to build their own infrastructure, while small ones might choose to use cloud providers. Some others use a hybrid model. This leads to talking about the ecosystem around the bank. There are many vendors who can provide many of the tools that can be leveraged within the bank. The question the bank has to then answer is, which tools are just commodities and can be purchased from the vendor and don't provide any competitive advantage? But they also have to recognize which tools are unique that provide a competitive advantage to the bank. What is the bank great at? Depending on the answer to that question, some tools, like the one shown in red, can be just purchased from the vendor and configured. While the other tools, those shown in green, have to be nurtured in-house to maintain the bank's unique competitive positioning. While that can be the basis of an AI strategy, a lot of thought and systematic analysis has to go into this decision if the bank wants to make sure that it does not waste time and money on AI. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. You can download a free one-page visual summary of this video by signing on to my mailing list. For those of you already on my mailing list, you should have the one-pager in your inbox already. Thank you deeply for spending some virtual time with me and giving me the motivation to do what I do.